Welcome back to Charming Data, everybody. I hope you had a good week. In this tutorial, we are going to look over the 3D plotting. We're going to do that in Plotly and Python. I'm going to cover my five fundamentals of 3D plotting. First, we're going to learn how to create the 3D scatter plot. Then, we're going to learn how to style it. We're going to see how to animate it. We're going to learn how to share it with others, so not only you, but also your friends and colleagues and bosses can um, enjoy the great, beautiful data visualization that you've just created. And last, we're going to cover the do and do nots of 3D plotting. The goal of this tutorial is for you to have a comprehensive understanding of 3D plotting and the necessary knowledge of coding and the docu documentation so you can create your own 3D plots. All right, so let's break it down. First, creating the 3D scatter plot. So this is the scatter plot that we're actually going to create. I'm going to show you how to do the x-axis, how to put data on the y-axis, the z-axis, and how to create the legend and the title. So you come up with something as beautiful as this that you can turn and visualize and see the depths and understand um, how the data interact with each other. Second, I'm going to show you how to style your, um, your 3D plot. So we're going to change the colors. We're going to see how to change that. We're going to see how to, ch how to change opacity so it's not as dark. We're going to see how to um, include marks. So you see diamonds and, um, and circles. You can include any marks you want. We're going, to, we're going to create a bubble 3D plot. So it's the same 3D plot, but now it's bubbles because it depends on size. We're also going to look into um, the how you play around with the log scale of an axis. You see this is a bit um, shorter here, and here it's a bit uh, longer. We'll go over that. I'll show you all about the log scale later. We're going to we're going to play with the range of the z axis, so it's shorter, and you can see more dots on it. We're also going to play with a um, template, so you can have different templates here in a different background. This is actually the Seaborn template. And we're also going to play around with a hover. So you can include any type of hover that you want, uh, just like you have here um, with the mouse on the screen. Third, we're going to learn how to animate the 3D plot. So here I'm animating by years. So if I click play, you will see that the dots or the marks are moving according to the years. So it's a really cool um, animation uh, that really explains how the data moves over time. In this case, the economic activity of women in the labor force. I'm going to offer you another animation, and I'm going to give you the code, which is which is a big part of code that you can apply for other um, animations or other 3D plots as well, not only the scatter plot. And this code gives you a play button so you can share with others, and just as soon as you hit it, it just turns on itself. You see how it's just turning? You can turn it this speed or you can turn it at a slower speed. I'll show you how to manage the speed, so um, you can choose whatever you want. You can choose it faster or less as fast. Okay, but before we jump into the code, let's look into the data. The data we're gonna use is this Excel sheet that's under the video. Make sure you open under the video all the links, including this data and the code so you can follow along. This data is gonna show you that we're using different columns, uh, such as Italy and the years. We're going to focus on 2010 more than anything, but different countries, different years. Um, economic activity, this refers to the percent of, of the female population that is economically active. Um, GDP per capita, the population, what's the average year that uh, women go to um, school in that country, and then the continent. I only did Europe and Africa, but I'm sure you know how you on your own, you can uh, add different continents on there. Um, I took this data from Our World in Data. This is a wonderful website that has all kind of data graphs, and they have all their data for free that you can download. So any graph you click on, you'll see a cool uh, um, interactive graph that you can usually download the data for. I just clean the data a little bit and combine it with uh, like two or three data frames. So it's probably better to use this Excel sheet uh, but you can also find it on the website. Okay, so this is the code that we're going to use. Um, you can read 
before or after um, this tutorial, make sure to read all about the 3D scatter plot in Plotly, which is we, what we are actually going to use. It's a wonderful library to create plots very quickly with very little code. Um, so this is the web page under the video. So take a look at this. It gives you beautiful examples of 3D plots. And specifically, if you want to go over the parameters that we're going to use, all these parameters in Plotly Express, Scatter 3D, make sure you open this up as well so you can review all these parameters. We're going to use most of them, but not all of them. Um, so definitely take the opportunity, take the time to read over some of these so you have a better understanding of what they're used for. Okay. So let's get back right into the code. And you'll see how we're going to create that first 3D scatter plot with, I think, like 20 lines of code. That's it. Okay, so the first thing you want to do, you want to import these libraries. Pandas, hopefully you know by now what Pandas is. But if you don't, just pip install Pandas. Very easy. It's like Excel on steroids. Um, then you want to import Plotly Express as PX. If you don't have it, just pip install uh, uh, Plotly because Plotly Express comes with in Plotly. I'm using version 4.7, so you can just say pip install, I think you do pip install equals um, 4.7.0. Um, but just go on the Plotly website and, the, and they'll tell you how to do that. Very, very easy. And then I'm gonna uh, do this so I can actually call the image and these uh, libraries I'm gonna use later for the animation. I'm also gonna use this later for the animation where it just spins around. So we'll talk about this later. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to use the Excel sheet and import it into a da Pandas data frame. This is the female labor cleaned Excel sheet. We're only going to do 2010 because um, our world in data, the website only has information on average years of schooling every five years. So I'm going to take 2010 and I'm only going to do the continents Europe and Africa. So that's what I have on the Excel sheet or in the Pandas data frame. If you want more, feel free to add those continents there. Um, and this we're going to use later. I'll show you later. All right. So let's create the first 3D scatter plot. What you want to do, fig equals px dot and call the method scatter underscore 3D and open the parentheses. The parentheses starts here and finishes here. But you don't need all this. This all this hashtag um, out. Um, these are for the rest of the tutorial. You can even erase them if you want. All you need is these, these lines of code. So all, all about 20, 25 lines of code and you got this scatter plot. So the first thing you want is after, obviously the data frame. So we have the DF as a data frame because we already cleaned it and this is what we have here. Then you want to use on the X axis, you want to use the GDP per capita. Remember the GDP per capita is this axis right here, is this column. It's inside the data frame right now as a pandas data frame. We are going to use this for um, as the X axis. Then the Y axis is gonna be the percentage of economic activity. So this is, in, I, I changed a little bit the labels, but what this means is the percentage of women that are, are economically active in that specific whatever country or whatever year. And then the axis Z is going to be years in school average, the average years of, of school years that women are in school in each country, in each continent. The color is going to be continent, and that's how I create the legend. The legend here is going to be the color, so you're going to have two different uh, colors, Africa and Europe, because you have two different continents only. Um, I'm going to, the color discrete sequence, I'm going to say that the first continent is going to be a magenta color and the second continent is going to be a green color. I'm going to use the log x true. We'll go over that later. I'll show you what that means. We're going to use a ggplot2 template and that's how you get the different colors and the lines that you see. But all these are the different templates, so feel free to use and play around with all the different templates. This is a title I'm going to give it. I'm going to change the labels. This labels is a parameter that allows you to change the um, certain um, uh, data inside your plot. So years in school average was, I think, my x-axis or one of the columns. I'm going to change it to years women are in school. Sounds better. I'll just do it that way. But you can change pretty much any type of data you want in here. This is the labels parameter. I'm also going to have a hover. I'm going to add the country as the hover. And the height is going to be 700 because I want it 700 pixels high. And that's it. 
close the close the parentheses of the uh, px dot scatter met scatter 3d method as you see on top on the left and then don't have to pay attention to all this because this is only for animation go all the way down and that's it then this is how you print it so as soon as you run this code you will get uh, where is it this as soon as you run this code you will get this we have just created the ski, uh, 3d scatter plot within uh, several lines of code that's it that's really cool and you can see here really really interesting data how for example as GDP you see a very positive um, correlation where the more GDP the higher the GDP per capita this is 1,000 this is 10,000 the more years women tend to spend in school all right for both Africa and Europe seems to have the same kind of um, correlation a positive correlation it's not necessarily like that um, with all the data for example here we see that um, economic activity for African countries the green countries they are anywhere from 80 all the way to 30 but years women are in school it's pretty much the same it doesn't really change it's around anywhere from from two years to about six years and there is no positive or negative correlation there is no angle it doesn't really uh, matter uh, what kind of um, economic percent of the population is economically active um, it doesn't really affect the years of women are in school um, so you can play around with it when you when you shift it when you turn it around it will, it will reveal very interesting information um, that's why I really love the, the 3d scatter plot all right now let's look how we style our 3d plot the first thing we're going to do is we're going to learn how to how to change the color so here I'm going to choose Africa is going to be yellow and Europe is going to be black to do that just go in here and go all the way up and you'll see that to change the color all you have to do is hashtag this back in and you'll see color discrete map this is one of the parameters if you want to read more about it don't forget to open the link below right here and you'll see just do control F color discrete you'll see color discrete map is right here and it'll tell you all about how it is how it's a dictionary with strings and keys and values so this is exactly what we did here we put the first key is going to be the continent because that's the continent is part of the color is part of the legend and then you choose the color I want it black and then Africa is going to be yellow and that is how we got the different colors the next chart you will see is the opacity so if you want to change the opacity the opacity goes anywhere between 0 and 1. 0 0.3, which is not very dark, it's actually pretty light, will give you this. You see? A light color opacity, so you can pretty much see through them. All right? The next thing we're going to create is marks. So you see how these are different marks? You have the diamond and you have the circle. We created this by, let's go back here, let's hashtag this out, let's hashtag the color out, and the, the, it's by symbol. To create the marks, the, the different symbols, um, you do this. So we're going to say that the year column is going to represent uh, uh, different symbols, or the symbols are going to represent the year. And we're going to say, well, let's start with this. This is just, just the year column. Now, I have only 2010, so it doesn't make any sense. This won't mean anything. So what I should do is I should add 2005 to this. Let's add 2005 right here. And this is how you get 2005, 2010. Um, and the symbol here is based on year. Now this is how you will get this chart. You see how you have 2005 and 2010 for the different, uh, the different symbols. All right. There's a lot of data on here. So be careful with combining symbols and color on the same 3D plot. Now, another thing you can do is this. You can actually change the different symbols on the marks so they don't, so they're not by default um, what, what Plotly chooses, which is diamonds. You can say, I want them to be crosses and boxes. To do that, you use the symbol map parameter. So make sure to keep the symbol on there and you um, uh, active. Make sure to hashtag this um, in back in and make sure to say I want 2005 to be a square open symbol and I want 2010 to be symbol number three. Plotly um, uh, 
uh, symbol web page has all these um, uh, values for each symbol so it can tell you what 3 means what 10 means what 11 means uh, I'll add that below the video so you can see all those uh, symbols and the mapping and you can choose any symbol you want all right the next thing we're going to do we're going to hashtag this out I'm going to focus on size so maybe I want to create something like this maybe I want to create a bubble 3d plot so a bubble 3D plot is just playing around with the size of the marks, or the markers, sorry. Um, and uh, in this case, I'm going to have the size be the population. So the bigger dots have a bigger population. You see here the, the population is um, zero. Well, I have to change the hover here, but you see 0 0.4 just times a million. That's, I think, um, uh, one... Um, how much is it? Uh, 100 million did I do? I got to change that hover over there. I'm sorry I didn't do that for, for here. I forgot. But um, this resize population, I'm resizing it right here. And I'm dividing it, I think, by 10 million or 100 million. Um, just because I didn't want the bubbles to be too big. So I just divided it. And now, after dividing it, it actually plots. So the bigger ones are obviously Egypt has a bigger population than a small country such as Swaziland that's somewhere in South Africa in between kind of a cool country and Benin that are very small and then the bigger ones are obviously Tanzania and Kenya and in Europe uh, Italy is a very big country and so on and so on. Um, later on I'm going to show you how to create how to play around with the hover data so you will see instead of seeing 0 0.8 resize population you'll see the 8 uh, 82 million something instead of this okay so we play it around with the size by doing size parameter and the size max I want the size maximum to be 50 uh, because it, now that I divided them by uh, 10 or 100 million um, uh, the sizes range anywhere from 0 to I don't know 40 something so I want it to be max 50 you can have it max 100 million but then it's going to be too big that's why you have to play around with it and resize it a little bit all right or not use population maybe use something else for for uh, resizing for um, for the bubble chart so let's hashtag this out the next thing we're going to learn oh let's take out 2005 before we forget all right so the next thing we're going to see is how to play around with the uh, log scale of any axis so take a look at this look at this log scale this log not, sorry this is not a lot take a look at this axis the GDP per capita it goes anywhere from zero to a hundred thousand in increments of twenty thousand right but when you see this it's really everything is like grouped together it's really hard to see the African countries where they lie between zero and twenty is this higher is this lower you don't really know so if you log scale this axis the GDP per capita you will get this log scaling GDP per capita now you see that it starts from zero or 700 and it goes all the way up to 10,000 and then it jumps like to 100,000 so now you can see the dots um, of each country in Africa a lot clearer and a lot better where they stand on GDP capita compared to do something like this so to do that all you have to do is see where the GDP capita axis is it's on the x-axis and then you just do log x true so you're doing a log scale on that axis you can also do a log scale on the y-axis and on the z-axis so it depends which one you want to use okay the next thing we're going to see is range if you want for example let's see this you can also play around with the range of the axis so, so look at this here the European countries are in the years women are in school anywhere from like nine and a half or ten to, to twelve but they're so up there at the very top that it's hard to see which one is where so if you want to have a better understanding you can actually change the range of this axis now this axis let's see where it is the years women are in school is a, is a Z axis so just go to range Z and then put the list where you want it to start and where you want it to end so we did 9 to 13 and if you do that you will get this so now you don't see all the green all the Africa because they're out of that range but at least you can see the European countries a lot easier when it comes to years women are in school 
you can see that clearly that Portugal has uh, an average of a lot lower the number of years in school compared to a country like Iceland or Switzerland, which is not very easy to see in this kind of chart. Okay. So just all you have to do is change the range of that axis. You can also change the range of the Y axis and the X axis. So let's hashtag this out. We already saw that we can change the template. This is ggplot2, uh, which looks like this. If you want to have a Seaborn template, you want to do this. This is a Seaborn template. So these are the colors of Seaborn, but play around with it. You can use different colors. You can use, um, uh, not colors, but different templates. Simple white, plotly presentations. Uh, these are all the templates that are in there. I never tried none. Maybe it's completely white or maybe just nothing there. It all disappears. Um, but if you, if you find it interesting, please comment below and let me know. Okay. Uh, the next thing we're going to see is uh, the hover. So let's play around with the hover. You see, look at this. Look at this hover that we have here. Uh, let's compare it. This hover of Iceland right here. Where is Iceland right here? Iceland right here. Iceland right here says continent Europe. And then it has GDP per capita 38.9K. Well, maybe I don't want it to say that. Maybe I don't care. I don't want it to say continent because it's obvious that the blues are Europe. So let's say I want to take continent out. And let's say instead of GDP capita 38.9K, I wanted to have the whole number 38,978. So to do that, you can play around with a hover by doing this. Go into hover data parameter, the hover data parameter in the 3D scatter plot. The key, it's a dictionary. The key is going to be the continent because that is the legend um, that you're trying to, to, that's something that you're trying to change inside the hover. And you're going to say false because you do not want to see it. You're going to see it by default because you plotted it right here in color. So if you want Plotly not to show it, then just say false. GDP per capita is another um, thing you're going to see in the another piece of data you're going to see in the hover by default because it's one of the axes. So it's going to show you. So I wanted to show it. So that's okay. I want it to be true, but I want it to be in this type of format. This is a string format. And by doing this, I'm saying show the whole number and only one digit after the dot. So if I do that, I get this. Iceland, you'll see GDP per, you see no continent, there's nothing in continent, and GDP capita will say 38,978 instead of 38K, all right? Okay, so now that we learned how to create the 3D scatter plot and we learned how to style it, now we're going to learn how to animate it. I'm going to give you two types of animation. The first animation is going to be years. So if I click play, you're going to see how over the years all these countries have been doing from 1990 all the way to 2010. And it's really cool because it gives you a, a nice uh, understanding of how things have changed over time. In this case, you see that over time, the countries, both Africa and European countries, have had higher GDP per capita and are going up in years women are in school. So the women are going more to school on average and countries um, are, are um, gaining more and more GDP per capita. At least people are supposedly uh, making more of an income, supposedly. To do this animation, what you have to do is, I'm just going to leave this hover data out. Um, uh, so to do this animation, you need to do this. I'm going to go years, so I'm going to animate from 2000, from 1990 all the way to 2010. To, to do that, uh, what you want to do is uh, hashtag this out because I want I don't want to focus only 2010 and hashtag this in. I want all these dates, all these years, 1990, 95, 2000. Remember, it jumps by years of five because in that data, that's only what we have right now, every five years. That's what um, the, the web page gave us, only this data. Plus, maybe I don't want to do it every year. Maybe every five years is enough. So this is what I wanted, the years. And then 
So the animation frame is going to be year because that's going to be the play button. It's going to animate years. And then you want to make sure to set the ranges. We went over this ranges right here above, right? Range Z is how you can set the range. You want to make sure to um, hashtag this out so you don't have double range Z. You don't have it twice. And then set the ranges. If you do not set the ranges, it bounces, bounces around. Different years have different ranges. You want to make sure that you take the, the minimum year, like the country with the minimum uh, 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 data point to the maximum data point and make sure that that's on the, the range. For example, let's look at the range Z. Range Z refers to years in school and average. So if we look at the plot, years in school, we know that 1990, we have anywhere from, this looks to be the lowest, years in school, years in school, 0 0.47 years to the highest is um, 11.5. But that may change. So we know now it's between 0 to, to 11.5. But that may change. Like in 2010, maybe the highest is somewhere around 12.7. So if you don't set the range from the lowest to the highest, it's going to be jumpy. So make sure that we know if the highest is 12.7, and the lowest is 0 0.5, just set it from 0 to 14, just so it's easier to see, or 0 to 15, okay? So I did the same thing with range X, and I did the same thing with range Y, all right? So if you unhashtag these, oh my god, my cat is really hungry, he is um, killing me here, I'm going to have to feed him soon. Okay, so if you hashtag these uh, uh, in, you'll be able to create the animation frame, and we'll also have a police and a fire truck, your city is going crazy today. Um, and don't, don't forget to put these in there as well. Not only 2010. All right, let's hashtag these out because we are going to learn how to do another animation. Hashtag this out and hashtag this back out as well. All right, so now you're left with this. You're left with the height, hover name, template, log, just the basic data we had from the very beginning. Oh, bring back 2010. You need 2010 because you need some kind of year in there and not all the years. All right, now that you have all this, I'm gonna show you with all this data how to create this animation where you, if you click play, you're gonna be able to automatically rotate the, um, the 3D plot. And rotating the plot is very important. We're gonna cover it in um, fundamental number five. Okay, so to do this, you wanna, you're gonna, I'm going to show you, I'm not going to go in the specifics of how to, of the code because it's a lot of code and I'm not sure I understand every single thing in there. But what I can tell you is that you can pretty much copy paste this code and probably use it for any other 3D plots that you create in Plotly where you can have that plot uh, rotate on itself. So make sure to use, um, we're going to uh, create these objects which are going to be the eye of the camera, the different angles right here. And then we're going to go all the way down outside of the parentheses. And we're going to go, we're going to uh, unhashtag this. Just like this. Oh, also this, hashtag this out as well. Right down here, all the way down here. Let's see if I did everything, all this, all this. Perfect. So hashtag all this out like that. And by doing that, this is the code. If you just copy and paste, you'll be able to use it in different uh, plots as well to create this exact animation where if you click on play, it will rotate on its own. Now it's rotating pretty fast. If you want to rotate it slower, what you could do is go into here into the dictionary duration, the frame duration, and not the transition duration, but the frame duration and change that to let's say 250 or 500. 250 is actually this speed right here. Let's look at this. Play. So this is 250. 500 is obviously twice as fast, but this is really, really great because it's allowed the, 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 your audience to see the depth and the at each of all three axes. So you can see the depth of the Z axis, you can see the Y axis, the X axis, and how they compare to each other and among themselves each continent. Okay. One thing I forgot to tell you is, is uh, this right here. This um, two um, lines of code actually belongs to this. So this belongs to the year animation, if you want. This is also the same thing where you can create, you can um, uh, control the duration. So this is a speed 
of the um, the speed of the frames changing. So they can change every one second is 1,000 uh, milliseconds. Every half a second, you can control the speed for that duration. But again, this only refers to this. Okay. All right. So let us go back to uh, perfect. All right. So we learn how to create the three scatter plot. We learn how to style it. We we'll learn how to animate it, and I also gave you code that you can animate other 3D plots. Now, the four, we're going to learn how to share it. To share it, and you're going to create an HTML file just like this. So you see this HTML file that I just created in the code? When you have this HTML file, you can send it to your friends or your colleagues, and they can actually use it to open it on their browser. I'm going to open it, let's say, using... Well, you can open it anywhere you want, Google or Microsoft. Um, if you open it, you'll be able to see whichever figure you saved. So I think I saved this figure. So if I share this, this is something that um, uh, if I if I sent you this, sorry, if I sent you uh, this HTML uh, file, you'll be able to see this and, and interact with it. You'll be able to do this, you'll be able to do that. You can also share uh, the play button. I think I haven't tried this, but you can share this exactly. How do you do that? You just go into here. Let's say this is the last um, code that we created for the animation, the, um, the rotation animation. All you have to do, since everything is saved under the figure, just unhashtag this, and you'll say fig write HTML, and then call it whatever you want dot html and that is how you create that file in this if you want it to be in a different place this creates it wherever your project is in my project is inside where is it right now i can't see it but my project right now this code is inside this the 3d scatter file so it automatically created in here i i moved it to additional but it will automatically create it in here if you want to move it somewhere else just just declare what path you want this in, and then just call it my3dplot.html. You can call it whatever you want. All right, so we learned also how to share. The last thing we're going to learn is how to, when to use and not use 3D plots. All right, let's see here. Okay, so... The first thing you want to know is never use 3D plots if they do not help to convey more data. This information was taken from The Fundamentals of Data Visualization by Klaus Wilk, his book. And you can see this image that is from his book where um, 3D uh, pie chart doesn't necessarily help. This is a 2D pie chart, very clear. This slice is 75%, this slice is 25%. But when you try and flip it and you add depth to it, then it's not necessarily clear because this is 75% looks a lot bigger, a lot bigger than this. So this looks very small, not like 25%, even smaller. So it's confusing if this didn't have the number in it. Here, you also you see you have a depth to it. I, as a user, might say, well, what does this depth mean, this thickness here? Does it mean anything? Does it add more data? It doesn't. So when the data is not, when the 3D plot is not adding data to uh, the user or your audience, then no need to use it. Okay. This bar plot, a uh, bar chart, 3D bar chart, is, uh, I took this image from Naomi Robbins from her Forbes article, um, and it, talks about how you do not want to use the 3D plot just for adoration or or so to embellish, to make it look beautiful. Yes, this plot really looks nice. You see how it's pretty, you have the different colors and the, it looks like different mountains. Um, but you're trying to plot a lot of data, and it's it's hard to understand. Is Tom, Tom is probably, there's 40 Toms in the north uh, part of the city, but uh, what about Dick and Harry? What what are they at 40? Are they at 50? It's really hard to say. Where look at this green one? It's really hard to say how many Harrys you have on the east side of a certain city. So it will be a lot easier with something like this, right? Uh, Two-dimensional bar chart that's uh, on two columns and three rows, and you can have a better understanding of how many. Um, Peters, they're on the north side or on the east side, and so on and so on with all the other names. So don't use a 3D plot if it doesn't convey more data. 
than a, a 2D plot and don't use it if it just embellishes and makes it pretty but it's just confusing. When, when do you actually want to use a 3D plot? You want to use a 3D plot for real life 3D objects. So a mountain or topography is a good example of a real life 3D object. So take a look at this example. This is a nice uh, image from Plotly um, webpage and it shows how this mountain has a peak right here and there's a color that helps understand the different um, heights and levels and the different depths. Um, on the webpage you can actually interact and move it around. The second reason you would use a 3D plot is when you have it in augmented uh, reality or maybe in uh, virtual reality because then the audience will be able to see the plot from different angles. Another good way to use a 3D plot is to make sure that if you use it just like we did with their scatter plot right here that it's you're able to uh, you're allowing the user uh, interactive capabilities. So you're allowing the user or you yourself with a rotate button to rotate it around. If you just give it like this, it's hard to see the depth. But if you play around with it, if you move it for them, it's a lot easier to see how the points and the data um, are related to each other. Okay, so you can use you do it this way or you can do it with a rotate button that we just created that you have the code for or um, also make sure that you have a hover so it allows them, you see this black box that is created every time you move the mouse, that comes by default with Plotly. So this is also a great tool to see, to see depths. If you want to learn more about what you should avoid in 3D plotting or what you should do in 3D plotting, make sure to read um, the web page that talks about the fundamentals of data visualization by Klaus Wilkie and his book. I'll add the link below the video. I hope you liked this video. If you did, show your support, click the like button, share with your friends, and most importantly, subscribe below and turn on your notifications for this video so you can receive a new video every week about different cool and powerful data visualizations in Python. Have a good week.